My name is Ray Crone. In 1992, I was sentenced to death at the age of 35. I spent almost three years on death row. And I was released in 2002 to start my life all over again at the age of 45. There is no doubt that going to jail for a crime you didn't commit is one of the horrific things to ever experience, but being on death row as well, nah, that's the worst, knowing that you could be killed at any moment for what you knew nothing about. That is exactly what this man went through for over 10 years. He was convicted and sentenced to death for a crime he didn't commit. However, let me leave the narration of the details of the case to our female narrator, Cindy. Cindy, over to you. Thank you, facts. This 66 years old man who is identified as Ray Crona was wrongfully convicted of murder and... One more thing, Cindy. What the hell is it? Could you talk a bit more slowly so our audience could hear you? Come here, facts. This is how I talk and ain't gonna change the way I talk cause of nobody. If you ain't cool with the way I talk, why don't you bring your ass over here and tell them the story yourself? I'm a bit tired today. Carry on. We'll manage your rugged voice. So as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted, this man, Ray Crona, was convicted of murder and sexual assault on one Kim Ancona, whose body was found dead in a Phoenix bar on December 1991. I didn't go in at 18 years old. I didn't go in as a 20 year old kid. I didn't go in coming from a broken family or, or a difficult childhood. After the body was found, Krona was wrongfully apprehended and it was claimed that he was the one behind the murder and due to limited technological knowledge back then, there was no such thing as DNA to prove his innocence. Ray never killed anyone, yet he was forced to survive 10 years of solitude on death row, where he was held in a 6 by 8 foot concrete cell with virtually no human interaction in the Arizona desert. He was also nicknamed the Snaggletooth Killer. This was indeed a horrible experience for Ray. Ray also said that the only thing that kept him going was knowing that his family never gave up on him even though it seemed like the whole world was against him. Actually, my family and friends didn't give up and give in and that gave me the strength to keep going. My family was able to get that DNA testing. That's when the doors opened up for me with a match to a man that lived right down the road from the murder. I was innocent, God knew I was innocent, and my family and friends stood by me that whole 10 years. More than 10 years after the victim was killed, Jay was finally exonerated at the age of 45 after a DNA testing was used to discover that, that the man who was present at the scene of the murder was not Jay, rather. It was a known sex offender who was identified as Kenneth Phillips. You know, I can't take away the frustration, the, the different em negative emotions that come from being locked up for those years. But maybe I could help lessen it. Maybe I could even ease it somewhat by talking about it, by sharing my story with others and knowing that it meant something to them. I think being able to talk about it and having somebody appreciate it, somebody come up and, and say, thank you, you really made a difference in my life. I, it's not work. It's a therapy for me. It's a, almost like a religious experience, an epiphany to say, yes, something good did come from that horrible 10 years. I never thought about the death penalty. I didn't care about the death penalty, whether they had it or not. It, it didn't matter to me. Now, since I've seen what can happen and how close a tragedy can occur with the legal system the way it is now, I am definitely against the death penalty and the possibility of the errors that can be made. If you have gotten here, kindly show facts your support by subscribing to our YouTube channel and turn on post notifications. You should also interact with us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook for more intriguing contents.